What's up, D Buzz and Devos? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So I am back. Today we're gonna have two videos because they're long emails. It's not two videos, excuse me. Two emails because they're pretty long. Um, as for myself, I have not been up to much of anything. You know, the kids went back to school, so I definitely had to get them ready for that. So that's kind of tough when your kids go back to school. Like, you know, you get used to them being around all the time. So, like, I do miss them. Like, I'm not even going to lie. They be getting on my nerves, but, like, for real, I'll be missing them, too. Um, but it, it's good for me because now I can get up extra, extra early. Like, normally I don't like to sleep past, like, 8.30 because then I start feeling lazy. Like, if I sleep to 9 o'clock, I'll just be mad with myself because I know that I have so much stuff to do. So, like, if I feel like I'm sleeping too long, then I'm just wasting in the way today and so getting up at like 6 30 is perfect for me because then by the time i'm done which is like 7 45 you know what i'm saying i come right back in the door i start my little workout you know i don't go on my walks yet because first of all it'd be like 100 degrees or early in the morning and a bitch ain't trying to die out there on a walk like for real i'll be out there on a walk the kids be like damn she done she been gone for a minute because you know i still do have uh, two other kids that's at home well they still live with me they're adults but you know they work but during the daytime they're here with me so you know tati or my son Wuzzle might be like dang she been gone for like hours what's up i'll be on the walk path pass the fuck out because i didn't pass out from the heat so i don't really do the walking thing in the summertime if you do want to walk in the summertime girl you got to either do that shit early in the morning like at like five o'clock or like late in the evening and i'm not really by the time the evening come i'm tired a bitch is tired so you know what i'm saying i don't do the evenings um i don't really have much to talk about for myself because i'm just getting the kids ready um rocking my hair from recool i'm so glad you guys liked it yes i have the same shirt on from the video yesterday because i put this shirt on just for today because the bitch did have her tank top on like i have on my lazy bra that ain't holding them up and shit you know you know how it be sometimes um but other than that i'm really trying to think of anything that i have to tell you guys and like there's nothing really that's going on in my life. Like, seriously. Oh, so I did do my product review haul yesterday. You know, what the hell. It's, I really be wanting to call it what, the, I think it's called what the hell. What the F, what the fuck, um, the shit I get in the mail. Um, but I got something that was like a total shock to me. It was like a total surprise. Like, because this particular item I have been wanting for like a minute and you guys know, I love me some head scarves. I love me some head wraps. I buy them like from all sorts of places. Mainly I buy them really inexpensive. Like I'll get them from the thrift store. I'll get them from the 99 cents only store. And you just have to have like the right amount of fabric, but it also, you need to have the perfect, um, the right fabric. Like you don't want to use something that's silky textured you know what I'm saying? Or wool or sweater material. But so I get things that are like, you know, nice in width and length, you know, and I make them into my little turbans. But so I've been, I've been on like certain websites and I see that they had like the African print um, head wraps. And then I've seen some on Amazon and, you know, like in Amazon, I put them in my wish list because I did have good intentions on getting a couple, but I just really couldn't for the life of me pick the ones that I wanted. And then I kind of like talked myself out of it. I just was like, April, you don't need none. You got like about 60 head scarves hanging on the back of your door. You do not need no more head scarves. So I kind of like, you know, just like forgot about it, but still did want them in the back of my head. Well, I went to my post office box. I think it was like Friday or Saturday. And I'm like, what is this package in the mail? And I knew it wasn't from a company that had contacted me because I just didn't recognize the name. So when I opened it a little bit, I seen like the African print and I seen like that thick, sturdy fabric. I was like, oh my God, these are head wraps. These are freaking head wraps. So I waited for like days, okay? to open the entire package so i just looked and peeked and because I, I already knew what it was and i was so excited so then i did my video yesterday and that was the first thing that i showcased in my video so one of my subscribers here one of my divas 
she has a website that she started of her own and she sent me two of these absolutely beautiful beautiful head wraps like seriously i used this one in the video and i tied it in like a bow and let me tell y'all these are so much better than like the head scarves that i use because the fabric is so much more durable you know when you have the fabric like this you're able to just do a lot more with it like more styles more wraps like i was so happy when i got these and like I was so undecided of which ones I wanted to choose from Amazon. So when she sent me these particular ones, I was like, dang, she not only was reading my fucking mind, but she sent me something that I would have definitely chosen for myself. So I was so happy about this. And I was, I put it in my video yesterday. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys again today because it's just like, I didn't upload the video yet, but I wanted to share it with you guys because I know this one will go up first, but I wanted to share this with you guys because I truly am so appreciative of these. Like I am so much in love with these head wraps. Like girl, these are the best thing next to sliced bread. Like seriously, you can really wear these with style and like you can do so many different things. So hunties, happy was like an understatement, like seriously. So I'll definitely try to remember to use one of the pictures that I took with this in a post or like, you know, my thumbnail, but I wanted to share with you guys. And I also wanted to say, thank you, Grace. Thank you so much. She did send me a card and I want to tell you just thank you because I absolutely love these. Um, she just, you know, was thanking me for my wig tutorial videos and how I helped her out. And so Grace, you was on, you was in my head, girl. You was definitely in my head and I absolutely love these. But her, the name of her website and she has them so cutely wrapped with these business cards and just twine and this beautiful African lady on the front of the car with a head wrap on. And you guys know I do chop up names, so I will definitely post it below. So I do apologize in advance if I am mispronouncing it. Mispronounce. Look, I just chopped that up. Mispronouncing it. Mispronounce it. I believe it's called Kisi. Um. I think so. Kesey Culture, Afro Accenture, Afro Accessories. And you can follow her on social media like Facebook and Instagram. And I'm going to post everything down below for you guys. But super, super duper nice fabric. Like for real, this is like some good fabric. And they're very lengthy. Okay. Very, very lengthy. All right. So, you know, my thing was this when I would see these. I would see people selling them for like, you know, $20, 15 bucks or whatever, or 10 or, you know, different prices and maybe even some a little bit more. And when I would see them, I would just be like, oh, for a piece of fabric, I could just go to the Dollar Tree. Let me tell you, it's worth the price because these are so much, dur much more durable. You know, they're made with quality fabric. They're just, they're nice and stiff. And this is how you want them to be. You want them to be this particular material because that's when you're able to get like those particular style wraps i'm like excited because i don't know what i'm gonna wear this one with because i, I can't choose which one is my favorite because i absolutely love them both this one reminds me of this hat that i had back in the day like like the late 90s i can't remember what the hats were called they weren't called koofies but i know you ladies who are like my age um because you know i'm 44 um can relate to the hats that I'm talking about. Remember, okay, all I can remember is when Salt and Pepper, you remember Salt and Pepper, they had a, an album out and I can't remember which songs was on the album, but I do remember the album cover was Salt and Pepper both had on like cat suit body suits. One had on a black one, which I think was Pepper, and Salt had on the white one, yeah. And then they had on the leather bomber jackets and then they had on those hats. You know what I'm saying? And then those hats were just like sitting on the top of their heads, kind of like, they kind of look like a bowl, but not like a bowl. I'm trying to see if I could find a picture album cover. I used to love Salt and Pepper, and I would see them all the time, like in Queens. So this is the actual photo. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to insert the photo in the video. These are the hats um, back in the days. And I had one like that, and it had the identical, exact same African print. I mean, this was like one of my favorite albums from Salt and Pepper. Like, 
they were my shit like back then. This is what you're talking about when you're talking about good rap music. Nowadays, I mean, like I really can't tell you what the rap music is like today. Um, but all I can tell you is that it gives me a goddamn headache. You know what I'm saying? So um, shake your thing. Now, um, that's what it was from. Um, that's that was like you know the album. Yeah, it had push it on it. Yes, that was the shit. Push it. Y'all remember that shit? <sighs> push it. That used to be the shit. Man, that was good music back then. But when I seen the fabric, it reminded me so much of back then. Like, you ever want to just be able to not maybe not relive those days, but kind of like relive those days? Because back then, like the late 80s and the very early and the early 90s and stuff, that's when it was all good. You know what I'm saying? That's when music was like its best. You know what I'm saying? We had our own type of style and fashion. You know what I mean? Jewelry, like good times, you know. I mean, there was some bullshit back then too, but not as much as it is today. And like these young ones, they just really don't understand. They be really like jacking our style. And then they feel like they don't because they just they so quick to say, oh, yeah, we, um, what would I say? Oh, yeah, I like those. Oh, yeah, those just came out. They feel like they just invented some shit. Like, y'all motherfuckers didn't invent those bell bottoms. They had them shits out when I was a baby. What the fuck, y'all? Y'all call them something different. Y'all didn't invent the motherfucking poetic justice braids. You know what I'm saying? Them shits came out when I was a teenager. I had me some of those. My neck was strong as a motherfucker back then. My neck was strong. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had to hold fast. Like, you know, so I just feel like it's so good to just be able to just like revisit back in like time. You know, you just can sit there and think about it. And so when I seen the fabric, I was just like, brought back like seriously like all i seen was myself in the pjs in the back room because my room was in the back with some salt and pepper posters on the wall and me with that hat on and i had me an eight ball bomber jacket so you know what i'm saying like girl those was the days so i just want to thank you so much grace and definitely check the info box below because you guys know if I have anything to share with you guys, I'll definitely post it down there below. But also, we all want to support one another with any type of businesses because, you know, that's what it's all about. So you definitely want to share, um, to post that. Um, and also, I'm trying to remember what else I was going to say. Bear with me one second. That's my daughter's school call. Okay, so I do apologize about that. I had to talk to my daughter's school, and I'll tell you guys about that in a minute. When you have your business and you contact a vendor or a company like myself or an advertising company or me, you always want to make sure that you have everything in the row, your ducks in a row. You know what I'm saying? So like, listen, um, I have had, I have done several videos, um, for one particular person and I'm pretty sure you guys know of her now her product worked good it did work good however I, I I started feeling a little sketchy about her as a person and I have put one of her videos um, on private and I'm about to just release not even release the video but I'm about to remove her video in total now if you guys remember um, it was a, a couple like a month back um, I had a video on like the hair care products that this young lady you know she creates now i started seeing like all these different little things now you got like some kind of diamond club or whatever on her website i found out that it was her daughter as she used as one of her customers just to promote this but okay you know what i'm saying and then on top of that like i started feeling start, um kind of like weird about the shampoo and conditioners because I started looking at them a lot more closely and I just started feeling like, hmm, is this really what she says it is? Because it's starting to feel like to me like it's some generic shit that you buy at like the Dollar Tree. But, you know, okay, I'm thinking like maybe it's, it is really helping my hair not shed as much. I don't really know because I, it did stop shedding as bad. However, I also started taking better care of my hair as well. So. It may be that, it may not be that. I'm not going to doubt her product, but I'm going to doubt this about her, okay? And the name, what the fuck is the name of her company? Um, I'm going to tell you what the name of her company is right now because I don't really like people fucking with my money, okay? That's one thing 
that I do not like. Never fuck with anybody's money. And, you know, a lot of times I've, I've heard so many times in the past, uh, we need to support one another. We need to support black owned businesses. You know what I'm saying? And I'm with that. My thing is this. I support anybody's business, male or female. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're doing good, I'll definitely support your business. Especially if you're not trying to rip nobody the fuck off. And this is how I feel like just because we are of color, okay, that's great. We want to support one another. I'm all for supporting females in general with any business endeavor that they may have, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just what I do, um, small business or whatever. So as women in general, we need to stick together. I don't care if you white, black, Puerto Rican, Asian, orange, and alien. As women in general, I think like we should just stick together, okay? Because sometimes it can be a little hard for women to just basically get through or fight through shit. So, you know, I'm all for sticking up for women. So she contacted me to, you know, do a video for her. This is the first video. And the name of her company is Kath, Kath, Kath Prickle Turtle, whatever her company's name is. Okay. And she sells like, you know, hair care products, cramp tea, like if you have your period tea for your period, it's supposed to make it go away. And like I explained in the video, it only brought down the pain very minimal for me when it came to my period because I have bad fibroids. Okay, so I have to get a full hysterectomy. So there's nothing that's going to help me. But it also had to do with the heat. I realized that it had to do with the heat. So, you know, either here nor there, I did two videos for her. And the first one, you know, you this is my business. This is what I do for a living. So I'm pretty sure you guys don't think that I just do all these videos for free because I don't. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot for free and I do a lot that I get paid for because this is a business to me and we just gonna keep it real this is a business to me and even though you pay me i'm still gonna keep it real and say i don't like the shit you know i just had a video like two weeks ago i posted up um called um i was catfished by a wig now i was honest in the video because i was catfished by the way you told me one thing and you told me to you told me another she that company did not want to pay me but listen you gonna pay me my motherfucking coins today i don't give a fuck what i said yeah i said you catfished me and yeah i said what you told me and yeah i said the pictures were somebody else's because it is what it is okay either way you ask for honest video review and that's what the fuck you gonna get okay but i'm still need my money at the end of the day because if you don't give me my shit then it's gonna be a problem so and, and that's what i i noticed like with companies there's several companies that i had to go after for my payment so anyway, Kath Pearl Turner Collection. You know what I'm saying? She um she paid me for her first video. You know what I'm saying? And I was honest in the video because listen, I only use the product a little bit. I'm not gonna say, oh yeah, it works. It's great. I'm not gonna do that. It worked. My hair stopped shedding, but I also showed like this is what I've been using for my edges, not her product, but this. Like okay, we're gonna be real about it. And then the next one that I did for her, you know, she was supposed to she was supposed to pay me for that. And she kept giving me all kind of excuses, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm going through something right now with my husband. Oh, my kids. Let me tell you something. She's a black woman. She already knew my struggle. I'm a black woman. I don't care if you was white, green, Asian. When I do something for you and it's a business deal and it's a contract, bitch, you got to pay me. All right? Straight up. You want motherfucker have to pay me. I don't, don't bring your motherfucking kids in this shit. I could care less. Like, I'm not trying to be cold hearted and say, I don't give a fuck about your family. But let's just realize this over here. Motherfuckers, I got five kids, two, and three grandkids. I'm never bringing none of my kids in the middle of why I can't post up this video or why I can't do such and such or why I can't pay my motherfucking light bill. Like, you don't see me calling up the light company talking about, well, you know, I got some kids and me and my husband is going through it right now. I don't do shit like that. But, you know, this is the thing that's pissing me the fuck off. I've had several women of color try me like that. And like, come on, man. Just because we are the same race don't mean like you got you can stiff one over on me. Don't feel like, oh, because I know the struggle that I can understand why you can't. Let me tell you something. I told this motherfucking lady already. 
I've been going at it with her for about a month now. Yes, yes, a month, a month. Okay. And I'm I already then gave her the warning. I done took her one video down. Now it's like, listen, do I really have to go in on you? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just listen, when you do a business deal with somebody, I'm just telling y'all this for future reference for anybody that you do a business deal with. Stand by your word. Do what the fuck you said you was gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Don't have the person come all out of character and just like blast you on social media and shit. Like, come on now. So you you never know. The next post you see by me on Instagram, adding her, mentioning her, might be some ill illmatic shit. Like or some real shit. Like this bitch stole from me. Cause in reality, bitch, you did steal from me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what bothers me is this, okay? When I hear people say, well, support black owned businesses, support a business in general, especially if it's a legal, legitimate business. That's how I be on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't look at people as color. You know what I'm saying? I know you color, but I don't look at you like that. I'm just like this. We all people, we all human beings. Okay. We all people. We all got to support one another. We all got to work together in this, okay? That's why we here in this motherfucker. It don't have nothing to do with race to me or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? But I just hate when you come at me with that shit and then it's one of my own that then did me dirty like that. So, like, you really going to tell me that you, like, did this bitch tell me that, okay, she was like, please call me. So I called her. And, you know, she's telling me about how, you know, her and her husband are going through it. And then the next week, y'all are already in court getting divorced. Like, bitch, please don't just stop with the bullshit and the games. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then I have to really investigate you and I'm investigating your website. You're telling me that your daughter went missing. Your daughter's like 22 years old and or 20. And you're telling me that she went missing and she sends me the links on Facebook that she went missing. Then I look on her website and I was like, wait a minute, this picture looks really familiar. She got her daughter post up on her website as if she is one of her customers. Talk about, oh, she already purchased, she purchased so much, she's got the diamond package. Like, don't do shit like that. Like, don't fucking do shit like that. Like, don't use your kids as customers. That's to me, is fucking lying to customers, potential customers. You know what I'm saying? That's lying to people and making them think like, these are your real customers. And like, so now I'm like really investigating this bitch. And I'm like, this bitch is a straight up motherfucking liar. And like, I don't, Listen, I don't really like to put people on blast and like, I I don't like to do shit like that. That's not me. But like, when you have brought me to that level, it means that you have really irritated my motherfucking nerves. And so like, I'm just telling you guys as a future reference, when you do a business deal with somebody or somebody want to do a business deal with you, make sure that they got all their ducks in a row. You know what I'm saying? And just like really, really investigate them because this bitch seemed real clear. Like I said, you got 24 hours to pay me and it says that in my contracts and policy. You know what I'm saying? And she paid me the first time within hours. And then now you coming through with all kinds of excuses. Now you want to get smart and a text message. I told this bitch already, don't let me have to put your shit. Please don't put me on my business on blast because you know, that's my business. And listen, now I'm putting your business on motherfucking blast. Okay. Bitch, have my motherfucking money and stop lying and being grimy. Okay. I don't care if you blue, orange, black, white, yellow, green, purple, pink, whatever color you are, clear, see through. Okay. Motherfuckers get your shit together run me my motherfucking coins. Okay. For real. Because if not for this video, I'm going to just go right on social media where I know you at, and I'm going to at you on that shit. And then I'm going to let everybody know, or better yet, maybe I'll fucking text you this motherfucking video. And I'm going to let everybody see Kath Patrell or Kath Prell hair care products. So what the fuck does she call herself? Let's see. Um, Kath Prell Turner collection, which product is best for you? I will definitely let y'all know that you is a phony fake ass bitch and you got your daughter posing up on your website as a motherfucking customer. On top of that, you coming up with all kind of bullshit stories about what's going on in your life. Like never bring your kids into a business deal unless your kids is doing the business. Okay. Never do that. Nobody gives a fuck about your situations when it comes to payment. All right. The light company, the cable company, they don't care. All's ends, they want they shit, they want their motherfucking money, okay?
bottom line. And I know I probably was all over the place with this shit, but I was trying to really be nice about it. But like, I really, really just really couldn't like be nice about it. And so, yeah, we're going to just go <laughs> to the next topic. The next thing is with my daughter's school, Mumsy. She's in the sixth grade. Why do they not have chairs? Like, there's like a few chairs in the classroom. Then they got these kids sitting on like bean bags at the desk. They got them sitting on like chair cushions. You know, like when you have a dining room chair and you buy those little cushions to tie on the back of them so that you can preserve the life of your seating. They got those on a the chair. They Why do my kids always call me in the middle of something? So, Nay, my 16 year old, she is doing volleyball tryouts. So anyway, so there's no chairs. So like I said, they're sitting on like these cushions that you would tie to the back, uh, to tie onto your, you know, your kitchen seating. They're sitting on bean bags and they're sitting on paint buckets. Like, you know, when you buy like an industrial size paint and it comes in a big plastic bucket, <clears throat> they have those to sit on. And like, who the fuck wants to sit on a chair? Like, like that's not proper seating. And like, when you're a bigger person, it's very hard to sit on the floor for a period of time. Okay. And my daughter, Mumsy, she's five, four and a half. Okay. She's five, four and a half. So she's actually my height. I thought I was five, three, but I'm actually five, four. So she's probably like just my height. So she's just my height. We're the same height. And so, you know, when you're sitting on the floor like that, you get very uncomfortable. Okay. For one. And like, I want you to be there to learn, not try to sit there for throughout the day, focusing on how to be comfortable, you know? And so she's been in school for the past four days and it's like every day it's about the chairs, you know what I'm saying? So I had to call, I had to go up to the school and I had to say something because like, where are the fucking chairs at? Like, this like call some kind of alternative style. Like, all right, I understand that, but bitch, we're going to need some motherfucking seating in here. For one, I don't really want my daughter sitting on the floor, but for two, it's uncomfortable. Now, if she was comfortable with it, then that would be fine, but she's not comfortable. And like, she's smart. Mumsy's super smart. But if they're trying to learn, but they're sitting and, but their seating is uncomfortable, they're, they're focusing more on being comfortable than learning. And like, you know what I'm saying? So I had to get that <clears throat> established with the teacher, with the principal. And she said, well, you know what? We, there are some chairs in there. I'm going to make sure that the sixth grade teachers have more chairs in there. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, Janaya has a seat because that's her name, Janaya, because it is uncomfortable. And she said, I can totally relate to you. And then I, like I said to her, I said, you know, the kids are there to learn. That's true. I said, but if they are focusing more on trying to be comfortable, they're not going to be able to learn because they're trying to be comfortable and they're focusing on that. So she said, you know what? You made a valid point. Hell yeah. Because listen, let me tell you, if I sit on the floor too long, my ass starts hurting and my back and shoulders start hurting. Okay. So that was what that call was about. But listen, we just going to get into this real talk. I was like kind of all over the place with this shit. Okay. But so yes, you guys, if you have a real talk that you want to have me read, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylover2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And so that way I can be aware that it's a real talk matter. If you want to change the names of the people in your email, you can definitely do so by just letting me know in the email. And if you don't, I will assume that you really don't care, but I'll definitely try to change it on my own because sometimes people will change it and you won't tell me. So I'll be making sure to change it. So let's get into this real talk. All right, ladies. So here we go. Hi, Mrs. April. I love your videos and I love your personality. I'm going to change my name to Nikki. I'm 30 years old. I love fashion and wearing wigs, but people keep calling me weird. Also, I keep getting called skinny and people keep asking me, do I eat? I said, yes, I eat a lot, but I just don't gain a lot of weight. These comments are coming from other black people and it's very hurtful. I'm a woman. My gender is always in question. A guy asked me if I was born a woman because I'm so tiny. It was a black man that asked me that. I hope you don't mind this being a little lengthy. In closing, sometimes I feel out of place, even amongst my own people. I really need your advice. Thanks for taking the time to read my email. Girl, that was not, Nikki, that was not lengthy at all, okay? Why would she think that? So basically, Nikki is being judged. I tell you guys all the time, stop judging motherfuckers. Like, seriously, stop judging people all the time. Like, for real. Now, so Nikki is being judged because she's thin. 
You know what I'm saying? And so people of her own race, of our race, of who, well, not everybody that's black is watching me, but of her culture, my culture, are basically ridiculing her and judging her about her her weight, about what she likes to wear on her head or on her body. You know what I mean? Asking her things like, do you eat? First of all, let me tell you something, Nikki. I wish somebody would ask me, do I eat? Because then that would mean that I wouldn't have to work out every motherfucking day. But since they don't ask me that, I'm just going to skip past that. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. People in the world could be so fucking cruel. It don't even matter if you black, if you white, if you Chinese, you Asian. People in general are cruel, okay? And... Like I say, we have to support one another because we all here on this earth for what? For one thing, to support one another and to live together as a unit. We don't all got to be the best of motherfucking friends or family members, but one thing's for certain, we don't have to be so judgmental to people. Like I always say this to you guys, but everybody is unique in their own way. Not everybody is going to be the same size. Not everybody is going to look identical. We are all different in our own ways. And it's so sad because you see these thin girls and then you just like, oh, why are you so skinny? Why are you so thin? Why are you so skinny? Why are you so worried about it? Okay. Her being thin, is it going to make you feel any better about yourself? You know, for people that are ignorant like that, you just have to just deal with them like a grain of salt. It's not even worth your time to get upset over or just to confront them about because these are ignorant individuals who have nothing better to do with their time and their lives but judge others. Now, then we have those who like, oh, well, you see what she got on? Oh, did you see what she was wearing? Bitch, why the fuck are you so concerned with it? If she want to walk down the street in a bathing suit, is it hurting you any? Is your lights getting shut off because she's walking down the street like this? Because she wants to wear that wig on her head, is it is it fucking up your wig game, bitch? Is it making you fucking be late to an appointment? Like, how is it fucking up your situation in life? Like, so this is the thing that I, I understand. We I don't want to be like her next door. I don't want to be like her. I don't want to be like none of y'all bitches, okay? I just want to be myself. Whether it's April with the keloid scar... April with a pouch belly, April with a big butt, April with some new fucking fake teeth in her mouth. Like, I don't want to be like nobody but me, okay? I don't care to be like anybody else but me. And whether I'm skinny or bigger or whatever, this me. Take me for who the fuck I am or not at all. I don't give a fuck if I'm wearing the shirt from yesterday. It's my shit. It ain't fucking with you. It ain't making your life any more different. And like, you know, for people like that, it's it's unfortunate that, you know, there are some thin people in the world that are just really, really thin. But it's unfortunate that their society is always like, you have to look like a certain size. And it's unfortunate. But my advice for you, for people that are like this to you, is you have to just like deal with them like a grain of salt. They're not even worth it. You know, like as a kid growing up, I used to get teased all the time. Freckle face, freckle juice, freckle face, freckle face. I know y'all like, bitch, you ain't got no freckles. I have a whole full face of freckles, but I, I know a lot of you think that I'm covering up my freckles, but no, bitch, you, they're not covered up. I'm, I'm looking right at them right now on this mirror okay but you know it's like when i do put on makeup they're not so visible but the motherfuckers are there they're definitely there okay but they're just not so visible on camera you know but as a kid i got teased a lot for having freckles okay or wearing non-name brand sneakers and shit like that and it's like this um you just sometimes you have to just like ignore people like that you know, you, you, you should never allow anybody to fuck up your joy, like on some real shit. Never allow any single human being fuck up your day, fuck up your joy, fuck up your happiness. So what? I'm thin. What you mad because you ain't this thin? That would be my response, like on some real shit. And then to question were you born a woman? Okay, so that's a little bit far. That's a little bit too far-fetched for me. Like, now you not only are being nosy, but you insulting me too. Like, as a smaller woman as she is, it may be a little bit harder for her 
However, I think like just to be able to say or ask someone, were you born a woman? It's like a jab in the throat. Like who in a right mind says some shit like that? And I feel like this, if a person could ask me a question like this, a man could ask me something like that. Nigga, you ain't even worth my time. Please go ahead somewhere. Please go ahead somewhere. Okay? You not even worth my time. And for those people who are so judgmental to others and have the audacity to say, well, do you eat a lot? Do you eat? Why the fuck wouldn't she eat? Everybody fucking eats. Whether they are bulimic, anorexic, they still motherfucking eat. Okay? You, you people, like, when I say you people, I mean everybody. We need to stop being so judgmental on others and worrying about what the fuck they got going on in their life. That's why, like I tell y'all so many times, that's why I ain't got no friends. I don't fuck with people. I just fuck with my immediate family. And that's that because let me tell you something. When you got all these people around you and they so worried about your well-being, like what the fuck you got on, what you doing, what you wearing, why you ain't gaining no weight, why you ain't losing no motherfucking weight, why you ain't stop fucking with that nigga, why you still hanging with her, why you take a picture like that, why you buy that, okay, why is you eating that, why you smell like that? Listen, that shit bring too much fucking bullshit, stress, and drama. And I'm going to tell you like this, a bitch like me, I don't have time for no stress and no drama, okay? Not only that, but I just don't have time for the bullshit. Now, people like that to ask me, oh, well, you know what? Why are you losing weight? You can't really thin. Bitch, I'm losing weight because I want to, okay? That's why. I get those questions. Why are you losing so much weight? Why are you still... Because I want to, bitch. That's why. Because I motherfucking want to, okay? Or, you know, why you don't let your freckles, um, why you don't wear your freckles? Bitch, I wear them every motherfucking day, all right? You just can't see them like that. But I see them every motherfucking day. Or you you, you shouldn't be, why do you want to cover up your freckles? What makes you think that I want to cover them the fuck up? Because I wear makeup. I like makeup, okay? This has nothing to do with my freckles. It's because I like makeup, point blank, period. But you know, Nikki, it's unfortunate that regardless of what I say, people stop being judgmental towards another. Someone's going to be judgmental. Someone's always going to have something to say, whether it's good or bad about you. Okay. That's number one. But number two, a lot of times when people are saying like negative shit about you constantly and asking you dumb ass questions, those are the type of people that you don't even want to have in your circle or you don't even want to socialize with, whether they be at work or in an apartment complex or whatever. Those are the type of people that you just really want to stay clear from because they're ignorant. And why be around someone that's ignorant? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need to be around ignorant people. Ignorant people need to be around ignorant people. That's who they, they, they are more comfortable with. Ignorant people with other ignorant people are where they should fall at. And let me tell you, I don't give any person my joy. Like, you'll piss me off, you know what I'm saying? You'll piss me off for a minute, and I might come out of character for one second, but I'm not going to allow you to take me out of my zone to where... When you said something to me, just piss me off like that. I know that when I see people that are, I'm asked by people stupid questions, you know what I'm saying? I just ignore it. Sometimes I answer them, okay, like, how about this? I'm going to give you a good example. Hmm. And I've, I'm, I don't know why people still ask me this. I don't understand. What the fuck does it matter? <clears throat> Are you black? Are you mulatto? What are you? What are, how about this one? What are you? I've, I've gotten that a lot. What are you? You know what I'll say? Bitch, I'm human. A couple times I said I'm an, actually an alien. Because you asking me some motherfucking dumbass question, I'm going to answer you with a dumbass question. But the one that I get a lot to is, are you black? What does it matter if I'm black? And then, you know, sometimes I'll answer, yeah, I'm black. Well, you're not fully black, though. How the fuck you know I'm not fully black? You don't even know me. You're asking me this out of just because you're curious. 
how do you know I'm not fully black? Why? Because I'm light skinned. What, what makes you think that I'm not fully black? Okay. You know, oh, you're mulatto, right? So you're mulatto. Are you mulatto? Like, you're, you're, yeah, 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 you're mulatto. What does it matter if I'm mulatto? I'm a human being. Or also, I get this one, which I get really irritated with. What happened to you? What What is that scar? What happened? How'd you get that scar? Is that a scar? What happened to you? I've, and I've gotten many people in public that I don't even know. What happened to you? What happened to your scar? How'd you get that scar? I've sent to a couple of people before. Why the fuck is it your business what happened to me? I don't even know you. And this is my reaction to sometimes to people because like, I feel like you very intrusive. Like, listen, hold the fuck up now. You gonna have to sit back. You gonna have to step the fuck back. You gonna have to shut it. And don't ask me no shit like that. Like, who does that? But you have to realize there are some motherfuckers out there that are just plain pointless and just plain stupid. And they can't help themselves. And, like, we cannot lower ourselves down to their standards because it's just not worth it. How about this one even better? So I'm with my mom in New York City, you know, a few weeks ago. We went to the Dollar Tree. You know, we was at the Dollar Tree how I got that scar. And we at the bus stop, standing at the bus stop, sucking no. Sucking on a lot. If I remember that from LL Cool J. But no, we stand at the bus stop and I got her cart and we just came from the Dollar Tree. And it was this Asian girl that was in the Dollar Tree also. So she came to the bus stop where we was at. And she asked me about the bus, the 16. First she said, she first she, she asked me, are you guys going to Main Street? Now she was younger. She had to be like in her 20s. Um, she was like, and my mom was sitting down on the bench and I was standing right there next to my mom. She says to me, are you going to Main Street in Flushing? And I was like, yeah, why? Do you know if the 16 bus takes you there? I said, well, I don't really know about what bus takes you there because I'm not from around here. But, you know, my mom, she can tell you what bus it is. I mean, you know, I am from around there, but come on, yo. I haven't taken a bus in like forever, so I don't really remember. So my mom tells her which bus it is, and it was actually the bus that we was waiting for, which was the 28. And the girl said, okay, well, because I needed to go to Flushing Main Street. And she said, well, you'll take the 28 bus. So the Asian girl, she's standing there. Like I said, she's like in her 20s. And my mom is sitting there. So she goes, this is what she says to me. She should have just left the conversation at that. She was like, oh, so you're not from around here? Where do you live at? And I was like, excuse me? She said, well, because you're not from here. Are you married? Looking at my finger. You got kids? Where do you live at? Why are you here? This, are you visiting? This is all her questions. And I'm standing there like this. And my mom is looking at me because I got the look on my face like, and I don't even know really what the look on my face is, but my mom tells me and my kids tell me all the time, like I get this look where you can tell that I don't like you. You can tell that I don't like something. You could just tell by my face expression. So I'm just looking at her and I'm like, and then I said to her when she's finished, I said, why you ask so many questions to people you don't even know? That's how I said it to her. And she was like, oh, because you just said that you didn't live around here. I said, right. But what makes you feel like I'm married and I got kids and where do I live at? What, what gives you the right to keep asking me all these questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I just was curious. I said, you shouldn't be so curious to people that you don't know. And so I left it at that. So me being standoffish and stern, with her straightforward, would have actually let you know, like, let me not fuck with this bitch because she mean business. Plus, she a little bit bigger than me. Talk about me. I'm bigger than her. And I'm a little bit older than you. But on top of that, I'm coming straight out to you. Like, why are you asking me my business? Like, it's not your business. Like, if somebody was to say that to me, I'm going to back the fuck up off you. That wasn't the end of it. She then starts telling me about how she's been living out here in Flushing, Queens and all her life or wherever she. Bitch, I don't give a fuck if you lived in Alaska. I didn't ask you this. And I'm like being nice. And patient, I'm like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. So then she starts asking me about, well, are those your real lashes? And she asked me some other questions. I said, you know what? You you real nosy. You stay asking people questions like, do you do you do you do that to everybody you just meet? And so she was like, Oh, I'm sorry. So I said, they're actually from the Velvet website, okay, the lashes. And then she said, you know what? Uh, the, the 16 is going to be here in 10 minutes. I'm going to walk up to the 16 bus stop. So, bitch, you just found out where the 16 bus stop was, but you stood here for like about 10 minutes with me, and here comes the 28 bus. This is what I'm talking about, about fucking special people. Some people are special. 
they're ignorant and they don't know no better. They will ask you all type of questions that they have no business fucking asking you, okay? And it's like people like that, like people like me that I deal with it in a firm way, firm and stern. And sometimes that's what we have to do. And then sometimes we just have to walk away from the shit. However, if you feel like you're being insulted, Nikki, by people, you need to firmly and, sh and sternly address them. Give them the look like I give and let them know, oh, do you eat? Yes, I eat don't you? Why would you ask me something idiotic like that? So you got to spew a question back to them to make them feel like they stupid. And that's all you do. You don't have to let them irritate you. It doesn't matter what race they are. However, never let somebody get under your skin. But when they asking you irrelevant questions pertaining to your fucking lifestyle and they're not, thing, they're not a family member, you need to respond to them sometimes with a dumb answer or you need to respond to them with a dumb question to them. Oh, do you eat? This is how I would have handled Do you eat? Am I breathing? Am I a human being? Then why wouldn't I eat? What a dumb question. Don't you think that's kind of idiotic? And then walk off. People don't like that when you challenge them. Okay? Sometimes we don't have to yell and scream and curse at anyone. We can just give them a stern, firm, answer with a blank stare and then walk off because you ain't giving them the chance to reply, you good. But never allow anyone to take you to a part where it's upsetting to you or it's hurting your feelings or it's out of character because a lot of times people that are ignorant, they don't know any better. They're just plain ignorant. And those are the type of people that you just want to feed them with a spoon, a small spoon and just allow them to just carry on with their day. Trust me, I have done it quite enough, like enough times, enough freaking times to where it's like, I, you know something, I'm I'm like super proud of myself these days because normally back in the day when you would ask me some dumb shit like, why do I got freckles? Why do I cover up my freckles? Why I don't wear my real hair? I would spaz the fuck off on you like, what bitch? Why I don't wear my real hair? What the fuck you worried about it for? That's what I would do. But nowadays when I hear people or people ask me what happened to you or why you don't wear your real hair, I just basically give them a stern, firm answer and look and just be like, what does it matter to you? Is it bothering you any? Is your lifespan cut shorter because I don't wear my freckles or because you can't see them or because I don't wear my real hair? Is it altering your life? any bit and then I walk off that's it because what you gonna do cuss me out at that point you're not gonna cuss me out because I didn't just played you and said what the fuck I had to say or you might cuss me the fuck out but listen you're not even worth my time a lot of times it's not even worth getting aggravated over because there are a lot of ignorant people out there in the world where they just basically put their foot in their mouth point blank period okay Help Nikki understand that there are some really ignorant people out there. And what would you guys do if somebody asked you, do you eat? i just say what I just said. Or sometimes I just won't answer you and I'll just be looking at you like, what? Fuck out of here. Okay, so sometimes I do say fuck out of here. I do say that. But that's just a, like a, an easy answer. I'm not even giving you a conversation. I'm like, what? Fuck out of here. And then I'll walk off. I do do that a lot too. I'm just saying. Okay, so this is going to be the last and final one because it's very long. And I love the title that she put it, Kiki, Does He Fucking Love Me? Okay, so I guess I'm Kiki. Okay, I'm Kiki. All the names have been changed. I've contemplated, <clears throat> excuse me, I've contemplated writing this real talk to you for some time now. I thought it would be pointless because I felt that I knew what your response would be before I thought I knew what to do. But I'm not sure. I'm not so sure now. So I'll start from the beginning and warn you that this might be a lengthy one and you might not get to your other real talks. LOL. In 2016, I was casually dating someone who really wasn't a good guy. He had a baby on the way by another woman who was actually my best friend's sister and a whole bunch of negative traits that I overlooked. I couldn't even tell you why I overlooked those things. I grew up in a very abusive household and I thought I was smart enough to not make the same mistakes my own mother had made. The only explanation I had is he was not really my man, so I didn't care at the time. I didn't care until he started projecting those negative traits onto me. He became physically and verbally abusive. 
make a long story short, I got tired of his shit, so I started seeking out other men as a way to escape his abusive behavior. Come fall of 2016, I started dating James. He is the cousin of my best friend's boyfriend. And the reason why I'm writing you this real talk is James, in a word, is unfamiliar. I'm 20 years old now, and he is going to be 25. And I know I have a long way to go, but I have honestly never met someone like him. At first, I didn't want to talk to James because I felt that anyone related to my best friend's boyfriend was bad news, but I gave it a try. When James and I first started dating, it was all good, like we were really good friends who also had really good sex. But naturally, it got to a point where I wanted more from him. I've never asked anyone the what are we question. You know, like, are we boyfriend and girlfriend, basically. But I asked James. James told me that he really liked me, but I needed to handle some things before him and I could get into a relationship. Cool. I knew that I had some other guys on the side and I was willing to let them go for James. After I let all my other guys go, James and I were at a standstill. He told me that he loved me and I couldn't say that and I couldn't say that I loved him back, which upset him, so we didn't speak for about a week or so. I can admit one thing about myself. In the past, it was super easy for me to just go with the flow, which ended in me making a lot of bad mistakes and telling a whole bunch of guys I loved them when I never did. I didn't want to do that to James. I didn't want to lie to him. I wanted to build a strong foundation with him, so I always kept it 100. At the time, I really liked him more than anyone else, but it wasn't love. Anyway, Christmas came around and I still wasn't seeing any progression in our relationship. It annoyed me, but I kept quiet, hoping things would get better. But by mid-January of 2017, we got into a huge argument. He was on a dating app talking to other women. He said he wasn't. Of course, he said he wasn't. And we didn't speak until my birthday in March. I told him that I had sex with someone during our breakup. And he admitted that he did as well, which only lets me know he was entertaining other women while he was telling me to handle my business. We decided to start back dating and things seemed to be looking up from there. And even though James and I were on good terms again, I started talking to other men again because I was pretty much over trying to be official. And I took the relationship for what it was at the time. All of April, May and June was great. James and I were still at a standstill, but I was okay with it because when we were in each other's faces, it was all about us. Like we were the only two in the world and I was entertaining other guys on the side. I could never prove he was still talking to other women, but I'm sure he was. I'm not going to say James made me seek out other guys, but I wasn't going to turn down the conversation of another guy because James didn't, want, didn't know what he wanted from me. I like to think I am attractive and I hold my own. I own my own business, pay my own bills, and I am educated. If he won't notice, someone else will. Our relationship took another hit in July when he told me he was moving across the country just two weeks prior to his move-in date. James told me he didn't know he didn't want to let me know months before because he loved me and if he and if he had said it earlier and told me earlier, I'd act differently and my love wouldn't be the same. As selfish as that was, I still kept it calm, cool, and collected, and I let him know that I wished him the best. From that point on, we spent every second with each other until he left to move across the country. When he moved to California, our communication got even better. He told me he wanted to be with me and moving across country was a mistake. It sounded good reading those text messages, but I took them with a grain of salt because why is he saying this now? Why wasn't he saying this before? He came back to the East Coast less than a month later and popped up on me while I was on vacation with my best friend. I was so happy because I felt him trying to build our relationship. I wasn't dumb enough to let my side pieces go. Eventually, the other guys I was dealing with started taking me out on trips to other continents, buying me designer clothes and jewelry. One guy from Atlanta bought me an iced out chain with my initials on it. James started to notice I was coming up on a lot of things that my money probably couldn't pay for. 
He confided in my best friend while I was overseas and told her everything his heart felt. I've inserted a screenshot below. You can read it out loud. My real name is in it, so please change it. I really do love Shayla, and you know that. This is James writing to Shayla's best friend about her while she's away on a trip out of the country. So James is writing Shayla. Shayla's the one that emailed me, okay? So James is writing Shayla's best friend about her and expressing himself to Shayla's best friend. I really do love Shayla, and you know that. I see 100 bad bitches a day, and they don't compare. I know she talks to other dudes, and I can't compete with them right now. I just don't have the money that they're showing her. It hurts when I see her in ATL because I know she's with some nigga, and she's happy. I don't want anyone else to have her, but at the same time, I look at her, and I know someone else is making her happy. I can't be with her because I don't focus when I'm with her. I can't work. If she calls, I answer, and that's not a good habit. Me being out here has me being out here has refocused me, and me, me being out here in Cali, me has refocused me. And I know that if I was out there with y'all, I wouldn't even be doing half the shit I'm doing now. So basically, James is writing to Shayla's best friend, saying that you know he loves her, he knows how he feels about her, he knows this, you know what I'm saying, but. He just feels like he doesn't have the money to treat her as like the other dudes are treating her, like taking her on trips and such. And when he's out here in the same state, all he wants to do is be around her and he can't work and he can't focus. So that was a, that was a text message. She, she screenshot it for you. Reading now, I'm back to the email. Reading that kind of upset me because I have never asked James for a penny. Those guys think they can buy my sex and love. That's impossible. The gifts are nice, but I don't need them, especially not from James. I just want him to respect me. That is all. I'm accustomed to certain things, and I know he doesn't have what other guys have. But some of this is what made him special, and he was too dumb to realize it. I have never, I have not had sex with another man since our break. What's, what upsets me most is that James never lets me know how he feels. He's too old to not be in tune with his feelings. I guess he's too real for that, shaking my head. Even still, I always know how he feels. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. And shit, so do I, but I am willing to change for him. He tells his friends about me. They've told him that if he lets me go, he's a fool. James feels like I am for everybody, but this all started with him. He basically turned me down two years ago and is now upset because I, got, I catch other men's eyes. All this time, I have been blindly holding it down for James, hoping that one day everything will be what I want it to be. I don't want to be a girlfriend. I want to be a wife. He recently caught a case, lost his job, and moved back to our neighborhood in New York. But I still love him so much. I'm even willing to testify on his behalf when the trial starts. We've always kept our relationship private, borderline non-existent to our parents and the public which has helped when it comes to building trust, even though we sometimes give each other the side eye. Sometimes the secrecy makes me sad because we want to show each other off, but sometimes I always, but something always stops it. I'm really stuck between a rock and a hard place. My light, my light is a lot brighter than his right now, but I want to help him get back on track. I don't want to be with anyone but James. I could say so much more, but I'm sure I've taken up quite a bit of your time. So my point is, I see a lot of potential in us, but should I just let it go? I've been holding all this in for a long time. I don't speak to my mother about things like this. We're African, so it's pretty hard to talk about relationships with her. But I love you and your channel. I've attached a picture of me below. This bitch is fucking got jammed. She's... If I was James, I would stop fooling around because she's fucking beautiful as hell. I got damn. She's really, really pretty. Like, oh my God. She's girl. Put your platinum blonde here. She is so pretty. Like, oh my God. She's fucking gorgeous. Okay. She's really, really pretty. If I was James, I'd be like, oh, hold up, hold up, please. So <laughs> basically, Shayla, and I and I think. She named herself that. I named her that because I'm, you know, I just wanted to name her that. So we're going to name her Shayla. Okay. So first of all, Shayla 
has, you know, she's had some issues. She started dating some guy back in 2016 who was basically an asshole. You know, he already had a girl, a baby mama, baby on the way. It was her best friend's cousin or her best friend, something like that. Um, or her sis, her best friend's sister's man. I don't know. Um, but he, this guy that she was dating in the beginning, he didn't have like the best manners. Let's just put it like that. He was abusive verbally and physically. And he started portraying those and, you know, doing those things to her as well. So she got out of that relationship. And, you know, she just started dating different guys. Not like she was being a thought or anything, but she was having different relationships. She was, you know, she had her side hustle. We're going to call a nigga side hustle. But at the same time, she had met James, who was 25 years old, and she's 20. And James and her, you know, they hit it off. They became friends. Their relationship is basically secret. You know, um, they keep it that on the hush hush. But they also have feelings for each other. James turned and told Shayla he loved her. She didn't say it in return because she didn't want to lie to him because she's told men in this in the past. And she likes James so much that she doesn't want to lie to him. And I get that. Like, just because somebody tells you that they love you don't mean you got to say the shit back, especially if you don't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Even though that's an awkward situation when someone tells you, I love you, and you don't say it back because they're looking for you to reciprocate it. If someone is to do that to me, I would probably feel a little bit awkward too. You know, like, damn, what did I just say? You know? But... The relationship seemed like it was at a standstill. It wasn't going anywhere. You know, she caught him on a dating app talking to other women. He said he wasn't. She knows he was. You know, and they kind of like took a break from January to March when her birthday came up. Or March to April, something like that. They took a break, like a month and a half break. Um, when they got back together, things were great, you know. But then he spilled it on her that he's going to be moving across country. And he'll only be here for two more weeks. He knew about it. James knew about it in the long run, way before the two weeks. But he just didn't want to break the news to Shayla because he didn't want her to act any differently. And he, you know, he really cared for her. So she accepted it and she wished him the best of luck. She stayed, you know, on the east side and he went to the west side. And um, he felt like it was a bad mistake for him to move because he really does care for her. Now, mind you, Shayla cares for him as well. And she needs him more or less to be a little bit more open. And she also needs to tell him that she loves him. Shayla, here's the thing. Yeah, you might have had some side hustles, okay? And James feels as though his money ain't right. So that's the reason why he's not trying to pursue anything more in depth with her. And he's basically telling her best friend this in text messages. But Shayla is not all about the money. This is what other guys do for her because they feel like they can buy her. But that's not what she wants from James. That's why he's special to her. She doesn't want that from James. She just wants James for who he is. You know what I'm saying? And I get that because I wouldn't want to be with somebody because they got money or they could do these things for you. Because after a while, that shit gets old and tired. You know what I'm saying? And you just want somebody to be there for you. Now, listen, Shayla, you have expressed yourself enough times in this email how you really care for him and how you really love him and that you don't want to be a girlfriend, that you want to be a wife and you want to build something with him. Sweetheart, what you waiting to tell him for? Now, you probably didn't even tell him that you got the text message and that you don't need his money and that's not what you want from him. You want him for himself. Sweetheart, sometimes men can be a little bit slow, okay? Sometimes they are not so emotional creatures. Sometimes they are not so expressive. And I get that. Like I told you guys last time, sometimes I'm like that too. We can't just sit there and wait for somebody to give us what we want. We got to fucking open our mouth. Okay. A closed mouth ain't going to get fed, honey. Like on some real shit, Shayla, a closed mouth ain't going to get fed. James is feeling this way about you and you feeling the same motherfucking way about him. Isn't that a coinky dink? But neither one of y'all know that. Okay. He don't know how you feeling about him. Because had he knew how you felt about him, like realistically how you feel about him, he probably would never have written to your friend about how he don't have the money like that to take you here and buy you nice things or to be with you. You know, he feels like you're happy because men are taking you on trips. They're buying you expensive things. And he feels like if he doesn't have that, then he can't, he can't compete. I can understand what he may feel that way, but let me tell you something, honey. Like I just said, 
A closed mouth bitch don't get fed, okay? Kiki, do he love me? Yes, he do love you, but he's also afraid. And he's probably feeling like, you know what? I don't want to go ahead and put my foot in my mouth and make a fool out of myself and try to get with her, like really get with her, get with her. And then she like pushed me away. And she still got her side hustle pieces. And I'm not really the nigga for her. Let me tell you something. If James don't know that you got that text message from your best friend who he texted it to, what I would do is I would inform him, like, listen, I need you to know something, how I truly feel about you. Because I did receive this message. And everything you writ wrote, everything you wrote in the text message about needing to have money, it has nothing to do with you. That's not what I see you as. You need to explain yourself because like I said, a closed mouth don't get fed and sometimes men are a little bit slow. And if you really want something, then sweetheart, you got to go for it. You can't just give up because you don't know that he don't know or he don't understand. Listen, we can't read minds. As people, we cannot read minds. Men are not mind readers. Men are not mind readers because had they been mind readers, bitch, we would have a whole lot more going on with our lives. They probably would never make us mad, okay? But since they can't read minds, neither can James. But what I need you to do is I need you to talk to this man. Now he's going through a crisis and, you know, maybe this is the best time to be open and honest with him and let him know, I don't care about anybody's money. They're just trying to buy my love. I have always cared for you and I've always loved you. But sometimes it feels like you're not really interested in me because that's what I'm gathering from this email that like he's not, you're feeling like he's not really interested in you and he can only tell like certain people. Like I said, some men are not so emotional. Some men are not so quick with it. They just don't understand. That's just human nature in general with people. Sometimes we just get it when it's a little bit too late. He don't want to let you go. You don't want to let him go. So, I mean, like, listen, if a nigga don't want to let you go and you don't want to let his ass go, then why the fuck would you let each other go? Just be real about the shit and be honest and tell him how you truly feel. Let him know that it's not all about the paper. It's about you, James. I've always wanted you for you. And this is how I truly feel. I will dead every side hustle that I have just because I want to be with you. This is what a relationship is about. You build on it. If you're in a relationship for the trips, the money, the jewelry, the clothes, and all of that fancy shit, then sweetheart, you're in a relationship for the wrong thing. Now, if they just your side hustle, then that's all good. You know what I'm saying? Not from my standpoint of view. Like, If you want to be with somebody, be with just them. Okay. But if that's your side hustle, I'm not judging you. Cause that's what you do. That's your side hustle. But if you really do care for James and you really do love James, then let him know. Like, listen, listen, nigga, I don't really want to be your girlfriend. I want to be your wife. I want to share my life with you. I want to share my experiences with you. I want to do things with you. I want to be there for you. I want you to be there for me. It's just that simple. But as long as you guys are both not saying nothing, then neither one of y'all are going to be happy. And y'all are going to both just fucking sit around and be like, oh, damn, I wish I could have said something to Shayla. Oh, I wish I could have said something to James. And now James was somebody else and Shayla was somebody else. And in reality, y'all just want each other. Like, listen. Get with the program, bitch, and just fucks with James and just be with him. Open yourself up. Like, the ending of this was, like, kind of disappointing to me, Shayla, because you said, should I just give it up and forget about it, basically? Girl, from reading what you wrote, I would have thought you were stronger than that. I would not think that you would cave in and just say, fuck it, and just let go. No, bitch, you should not fucking let go. Fight for your man. He is at a very impressionable stage right now, a vulnerable stage where he's going through something, okay, legally. And it's cool that you're there for him. But also, make the nigga feel good and express yourself and let him know how you feel. Listen, you're a beautiful young lady, and I'm pretty sure James is a beautiful guy as well. You guys will make a lovely couple. You just both have to stop fronting and bring your relationship out in the public. Stop hiding each other. When I say bring it out in the public, I don't mean let everybody know your business, meaning stop being so secretive about it. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah, that's my girl. Just be real about the shit. Once you're real about it and you're not so secretive about it, 
then you're able to just be able to express yourselves more. There's no reason to hide your relationship because if you truly do care for one another, then what, what the fuck is you hiding it from? Who, why are you hiding it? Let it be known. I'm feeling this dude. I'm, I'm loving him. I'm loving on him. I'm feeling on him. I'm loving him. Okay. Like on some real shit and let him do the same thing. What's the reason for the secrecy? You know, if James is a good guy and you want to be with him, then bitch, don't let it go. Listen, you see me, I've already had a divorce and I got back with my ex-husband and I wish to death that I would have never got a divorce for him because I love him to pieces. However, he felt the same way as I felt, but we both didn't say anything to each other until like, you know, finally. And a closed mouth does not get fed. And being that we both were able to establish a, a conversation with each other and establish that, yeah, I want you, and yeah, I want you, nigga. All right, then let's do this again. I, I, a big part of me wishes that I didn't get a divorce, but then there's the part of me that is like, okay, you know what? I'm glad that I did because it allowed me to grow. It allowed him to grow, and we matured a lot more, so it made us even more closer. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happens sometimes when you when you break apart from one another. You just grow and you mature more. And it seems like you have matured a lot more because you're only really interested in James and you're not even interested in the fact that he doesn't have money. It seems like you have matured a lot more, okay? And so has he. But now here is the part where you have to mature even more. Get off your ass, girl. Open up your mouth and let that man know that you care about him and it's not about the money so that way he doesn't feel so insecure because I, i'm pretty sure that it's hard for a man to just look at another man and see like this is what he's doing with the woman that i really want to be with and i can't do this for her i'm pretty sure that's fucking with his pride but you have to let him know hey i love you i want to be with you and let's get let's come together and work on this relationship together so that way you can just be with me I can just be with you. We don't got to be secret about a relationship. And it is what it is. Honey, listen. It's an old saying. You only get one time at real love, true love. And the way you're going on and on in that email about how you feel about him, girl, I think this is your only one time. You know, life is short. Sometimes we got to put our pride aside for real and do the right thing. And just, you know what I'm saying, put ourselves out there. So now is the time for you, my dear, to put yourself out there, put your pride aside, and let James know you know about the text message, and let James know how you feel, okay? Because I'm pretty sure he doesn't know how much you love him as much as you just expressed it to me. I tell you guys all the time, stop being a coward, like, you know what I'm saying? I know I be the one to talk because sometimes I'm not so emotionally expressive, but you only got one life to live. Live that shit to the fullest, bitch. Like, bitches, bitches, bitches. Live that shit to the fullest, like, on some real shit. Like, on some real shit. Stop holding back. It's either going to be a yes or a no. You ain't never going to know unless you ask. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never going to know unless you say something. That person sitting on that side of the room, feeling you, digging on you, and you on this side of the room feeling them, y'all just missing out on each other. Girl, bye. Open up your mouth, girlfriend, so that way you can open up your arms and you can wrap them around James. So on that note, you guys, I'm going to go. I'm super hungry. My belly is rumbling and my head is starting to get lightheaded because I'm so fucking hungry. And all I ate was a peach today. So I'm really trying to like eat more than once a day because my metabolism. But I love you guys. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you check the comment section the description box and all that good stuff. You want to see the video for this wig, hunties, because I had to customize the hell out of this, then, you know, make sure you check it out. But stay deep and deep delicious, and I'll see you guys soon.